Welcome to my blog. In the next few videos, I'm going to show you how I turn this into this. So in previous videos leading up to this one, I showed you how I assembled all of the different sections together, got my gaps nice and tight to weld it all up, and how I dealt with the heat distortion created from the welding process. This is a collaborative project with Chris Cadle from Outline Displays. Chris's contact details are in the video description if you'd like to have yourself a genuine neon sign built. A lot of kind of acrylic neon on the market these days, which just isn't the same. This is this thing is actually alive. I know you can't probably see it on camera, but little parts of it are pulsing, bubble gumming, I believe it's called. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through my various processes that I find particularly helpful for myself. These probably differ from other people's and uh, we're all different. We all find what works best for us. But I do believe that if you know your end result, before you started, there's a very, very good chance you're gonna make a good job of something rather than kind of going at it from a kind of haphazard, well, I'll try this and see if this works attitude. So I'll talk you through my processes. I've got my sections welded together. I've removed the bead. Once I've removed the bead, then I've taken out this issue of having that flat metal forming around the bead, uh, creating further distortions. I then analyzed to death the shape of the panel and what I'm trying to create. Without that bead, of course, it all starts becoming more apparent if things need to be bashed about a little bit more to try and get that initial shape back in. I always do this before I actually start the metal finishing process because the last thing you want is a real, real obvious high spot on that panel that you're gonna try and put that file over and you're gonna wear it thin very, very quickly. So. I try and get everything as good as I can before I start the actual metal finishing process. Over the years I've been contacted many times by people telling me that they use a sanding block with some guide coat as opposed to using a body file. And there is merit in this, but I would only use a sanding block personally to kind of initially assess my high and low spots. It's a fantastic tool to run it over the panel and then you can instantly see where your highs and your lows are, especially if you put a little bit of guide on, like I said, but always remove that guide coat before you put anything else over the top. So I would only personally use this, like I say, as an initial assessment or to kind of really, really finesse the repair after it's been metal finished. I sometimes use a block for that too. So that's why I'd use it. The body file, it takes no prisoners. It's dead flat and it sits on top of the high spots, doesn't go down into the troughs, and you can't really get away with those low spots remaining. Whereas the sanding block is more likely to go down into those troughs of the low spots, take away your guide coat, you think you're further forward than you actually are, and it may end up a little bit ripply, you might have to put a bit more filler in than you would have done if you'd used a body file. This is a body file, adjustable, so you can uh, do concave or convex. This is slightly convex here because we've got it leading in slightly so I could just put a slight curve on the file like that, not a problem. This file is used to highlight low spots. It is not really used or its intended purpose is not to file down the material. People often kind of confuse this. Uh, what all we're doing is using this to highlight so it's basically scuffing or scoring the surface of the metal is as I said it's not to actually file down what you can do with this is get carried away of course and file the metal thin and that is not you know that's not our objective I can't stress that enough because like I say people insinuate that you're using it to file material off and that's incorrect and also people may feel like uh, you can use it to file material off to get it flush. Again, that is not what you want. The purpose is to highlight the low spots. So all I'll do is just pass the file over the top. All we're doing, like I say, is just scoring the surface to highlight the low spot.
This is a, another handy file I often use. I call this my Mr. Luigi file. Mr. Luigi passed away a few years ago. He's an old Italian palampeter I used to work with and he basically showed me this useful tool he made up. He used to use these for lead loading quite a lot. And all it is is just basically a body file that's been bent using oxygen acetylene torch. So just heated up and bent so it's got that little dog leg in it. And this, this would be just as effective on something like this for highlighting the low spots you pass the fire over. You drag it that way because the teeth are facing the other way. Turn it around, you can push it that way, vice versa. So. look at these highlighted low spots. So anything that isn't filed, anything that isn't bright, is a low spot. That's why it's been a little bit useful that this has got a tiny bit of surface rust on, which has meant that it's highlighted it. Of course you could use some kind of guide coat. The only thing is with using a lot of guide coat is that it will block your file eventually. We can see that we've got our low spots highlighted so we know now where to bring up our low spots basically by placing a dolly underneath and using a bumping file or a slapper or a spoon just to bring up those low spots. I do prefer to use something for this job a shrinking file or a bumping file this one was made by a viewer called Elliot. Thanks very much, Elliot. I'll give it a go now. Let's see if it works. So I quite like using a toothed file for this because it highlights where you've gone with a file because sometimes with a smooth slapping file, you can often not see where you've gone. Just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just demonstrate how this works in a small area. So let's just pick an area. We'll say here, there's sort of like a triangular patch of low spot here. Just need to have a dolly that's got a bit of a crown on it and place it up underneath. What we want to be hearing is this sound and not this sound. So you won't, don't want the dullness of the panel. You want the, 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 you know, the tingy zinginess of the dolly that you can hear. And then you know that you're actually contacting steel. So I'll just place this dolly underneath and see if we can make contact. If you've got some strip lights in your garage, if you can actually catch the strip light in your eyesight across the panel like that, you can kind of roll the dolly like that. And sometimes you can see the dolly through the steel because it's actually disrupting the surface of the steel if you put a bit of pressure against it. That is a good way of kind of seeing where you are vi visually rather than doing everything by feel and guesswork. So I'll kind of hold the dolly, see if we can make contact. I'll just give you a quick close-up on that so that you can actually see where the teeth have dug into the surface. Nice and close to the panel work. Um, we can see that we got teeth marked. So we can see where we've raised the panel. We can see where we've made contact, you see. And that's the point of the teeth as well, is to also highlight where you've gone. Because if we just used the smooth slapper, we wouldn't have seen these marks and it would have been a little bit harder to identify exactly where we'd been. So let's just pass the body file over it and we'll watch some of these low spots disappear. So instantly we can see that we've definitely raised some of the low spots but we need to put more work into it. What we don't want to do is we don't want to just keep hammering along on this file trying to take these high spots down because that's what you will do if you keep on filing. You just need to really pass the file a few times just to score the high spots. Highlight the low spots and do not give it any more 
filing because every time you put this file over you will be removing a very tiny amount of metal but if you keep doing it over and over and over again of course you'll end up where you're just file the panel thin and that's the last thing we want all we want to use it for is like I said score the surface of the steel to highlight the low spots so we can see that we've still got a bit of a low spot around here a little bit here a little bit over here so all we need to do again is to put our dolly underneath and to continue raising these spots Okay, so it hasn't taken long to do that. As you can see, I've raised that now so that it's flush with all the metal work around. I'm just gonna carry on doing the rest, of course. This is just a repetitive, laborious process, which I won't show you the whole thing because it's gonna take several hours to do, and it would be extremely boring to watch the whole thing, but it's just, like I say, it's just a repetition of what we've already done here, and that's what I'll do for the rest of this. And then if there's any high spots that need shrinking down afterwards, we'll come back and we'll address those. Well, thanks very much for watching. And thanks very much for my bumping file, Elliot. You can tell that it's been made with love. So yeah, it's, uh, it's worked, it's done the job. It's different from my other file. It's heavier at the back than it is at the front. It's got this deep dog leg thing going on. It pivots in my hand and it's got a very, very light touch to it compared to my other body file, but it works superbly well, as you've seen in the video. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I made my low spot dent lifter to assist and aid me with metal finishing to speed the process up. Not to be missed, that one. Another Ron Caval inspired video, that one will be. I've just got a few more thanks to make. I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all those people that have sent me a donation towards my tool fund. Just last week, I finally got myself a sheet metal guillotine, four foot wide sheet metal guillotine, an old bit of kit that's hardly ever been used. The guy bought it, said he'd hardly ever used it, probably used it a handful of times and I managed to buy it not far from where I live. Massive thanks as well to Chris Howell for helping me to go and pick it up. So massive thanks to those people that helped me out with those donations. Without your help, I wouldn't have been able to buy that sheet metal guillotine. It's as simple as that. I just wouldn't have been able to afford it myself. And not only have you helped me buy it to use myself, you've also ensured that I'll have some equipment to use in future videos for other people to watch so you've helped all those people as well. So until next time, I will say a heartfelt bye for now.
Thank you.